Okay, let's get started with installing our Rails app. Open the terminal and type in the following instruction, gem install Rails. This will install the latest version up to date. At the time of the recording, it is 416. So if you type that in, it will install Ruby on Rails along with the several dependencies that make part of it. We need to wait a little while until everything is installed. When we do this, we will be able to type in the Rails command. When we do it, we will get a help text, as you know. For now, all I want to do is just type in the new command to create our application. I'm going to name our application Rails Store. This looks good enough for me. Let's just press enter here and it will create all of the files that make for a standard Rails project along with running the bundle command to install every single dependency. This will take a little while as well, so we'll just cut it out. Well, it seems that I already had everything, so it was almost instant. With that, I'm going to go inside the Rails project and I'm going to open the editor of my choice. I use Vim, but you can use any other editor you prefer. I'm going to open the gem file and I'm going to add some dependencies that I think we'll need in order to fulfill our expectations. First and foremost, I'm going to create a simple command that will allow me to remove every single comment here. I find this too distracting. I'm going to select everything that begins with a pound sign and I'm going to type in the dd command which will delete everything. Oh, it seems that I deleted everything but the comments, so let me just switch that up. There you go. So these are all the gems that we are using already. I'm going to add a couple more. These are all of the new gems that I've inserted in the background. Let me explain you what each of these will do. The first one enables Bootstrap in our application. I'm going to use it in order to save some time with laying the application out in terms of visual look and feel. Haml Rails will allow me to use Haml in our application. I find Haml a lot easier to work with than ERB. It has a lot less code and it makes it a lot easier to understand. If you don't like it, you can always exclude this gem. By the way, the auto prefixer gem is related to Bootstrap in the way that it adds all of the vendor CSS rules for CSS3. So these two are tightly related. Carrier Wave and Mini Magic are here because we want to upload some images. So we'll have a tiny little file tag inside the product form in order to upload an image to that product. The Puma gem is a different web server. Other than Webrick, it allows for concurrent threading and it is just a lot faster than using Webrick. You can also use this in production, so don't worry about it, it's really really good. Device will be the mechanism for creating users. So we can just provide a few commands and we will have a user mechanism which comes with a bunch of already existing functionalities around users. So we'll go with that. Country Select is a gem that was extracted from Rails that will allow us to choose a country from a wide variety of them. I wouldn't bother about choosing every single country in the world. This gem already has that list and we're going to use it. In the test group, we're going to include mini test Rails and factory girl Rails. We'll create some tests in order to assert that a particular class works properly. So we're going to use these two. The HTML to Haml gem will be there in case we need to convert some ERB files back into Haml. And finally, we'll have the pry Rails command, which will allow us to debug our Rails application in real time. We just add an instruction and we're good to go. With the list all set up, we're going to type in the bundle command in order to install all of these gems. You can see that I already had them, so this went really, really fast. To finish off this lesson, we're going to make sure that Bootstrap works correctly. Let's open the stylesheets application CSS file. And in line 12, I'm going to include the following directive. You type in require bootstrap and it should be good to go. 
Next, let's go to the application.js file under the JavaScripts folder and do the same thing. Let's create a new entry on top. We'll type in require bootstrap. Oh, I guess this should be at the very bottom. Let me just put it that way. Bootstrap requires jQuery, I believe. So we'll do that right after including jQuery. So this should be good to go. Let's open a new tab and navigate to our application. So CD Rails Store and type in Rails S. Never mind the warnings. This is normal if you're using Homebrew. So don't worry about that. We're going to boot the Puma server and we'll just need to open our browser. Let me just go and type in Firefox. Type in localhost 3000. And there you go. Our application is working. We'll start creating our pages, forms, and models in the next lesson. Jump there so we can start considering our data model.